It was really about the Vietnam War, and that was the period where Nixon was trying to run for a second term, which got me to thinking historically about how do democracies get turned into dictatorships? Because democracies aren't overthrown, they're given away. George Lucas The outside world influences one's art, sometimes by osmosis. It's almost unavoidable. The world around you is your inspiration. At a 1981 story conference, Lucas was asked if the Emperor was a Jedi, and Lucas responded with, quote, No, he was a politician. Richard M. Nixon was his name. He subverted the Senate and finally took over and became an Imperial guy, and he was really evil, but he pretended to be a really nice guy. Close quote. I don't think there's any question that Lucas's opinion of Richard Nixon was not a kind one. But the animosity goes deeper than just one man. It's directed at authority as a whole. Lucas was 24 years old when Richard Nixon took office in 1969. Vietnam, government deception, government lies, injustice, a forever war in Southeast Asia. Nixon was at the top of the pyramid and Lucas was taking notes. In 1973, Lucas described Star Wars by saying it would show, quote, a large technological empire going after a small group of freedom fighters, close quote. In 1967, 10 years before Star Wars would come out, George Lucas graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts, and Lucas tried to join the Air Force as an officer. He was rejected because of numerous speeding tickets. While George Lucas's number did come up for the draft, just like it did for over 2 million American men during the Vietnam War, the doctors discovered he had diabetes. He was not eligible for service, and I'm assuming here, I'm assuming here, but I'm guessing Lucas was not complaining at this time. There's no question what his attitude was toward the conflict in Vietnam. George Lucas was actually slated to direct Apocalypse Now and planned to get started in 1971. He envisioned the film as a dark comedy. The project was originally going to film at Rice Fields in California and on location in Vietnam while the war was still going on. Lucas conceived Apocalypse Now as a documentary-style anti-war portrayal of the conflict in Vietnam. Lucas decided to shelve the project because of his involvement with American graffiti. But Francis Ford Coppola continued to ask Lucas to direct Apocalypse Now. But when Lucas got the green light to make Star Wars, he declined. And as we know, Francis Ford Coppola went on to direct Apocalypse Now himself. In James Cameron's show, Story of Science Fiction, Cameron sits down with Lucas to discuss some of the themes in Star Wars. It's a really great interview, check it out if you haven't seen it. After a discussion about how Star Wars represents the fight against colonialism and even the American Revolution, Lucas goes on to talk about Star Wars in this way, quote, We're fighting the largest empire in the world, and we're just a bunch of hayseeds in coonskin hats that don't know nothing. And it was the same thing with the Vietnamese. The irony of that one is that in both of those, the little guys won, in the big highly technical empire the British Empire or the American Empire, lost." Close quote. Star Wars has always had a lot of mythological themes coursing through its veins, but it's also had an equal amount of historic themes or topical themes, themes that address modernity, themes that address modern politics or figures of authority. The subtext has always been there and sometimes it's incredibly overt, like with much of the politics in the prequels, much of the lines of dialogue reflect politicians at that time, even character names reflect politicians of that time. And I'll let George Lucas say it himself, quote, I come out of anthropology, so my focus is social systems. And in science fiction, you've got two branches. One is science and the other is social. I'm much more of the 1984 kind of guy than I am the spaceship guy." Close quote. 